Is Doublelift the best player in the LCS? Perhaps. In our moment of the week, brought to you by Omen by HP, we posit that exact query to one Miss Emily Rand, who joins us now from our Los Angeles studios. So Emily, Doublelift just won his sixth domestic title. One more than that name that otherwise frequently comes up in Bjergsen with the reverse sweep against TSM. First, before we move on to Doublelift himself, break down that matchup for us. We saw a lot of interesting things out of both of these teams, and it was an insanely close match. It actually came down to the fifth game and which team made fewer mistakes. Uh, we saw a lot of composition adjustment and draft adjustment throughout the series, which I actually really liked. Um, and I mean, I think there was no doubt that these were the two best teams in North America. And we can only hope that TL can go on to hopefully do a little bit better at the midseason invitational than they did last year. So I think they have a much stronger mentality and understanding of how this team wants to play um, than you know we previously anticipated. And their two new additions uh, in Core JJ and Jensen from the previous year also just make them uh, an even stronger team than they were last year. Emily, on to Doublelift himself. He posted a bad scoreline of 6-8-10 in his finals losses, but ended up 15-4-21 in the final three games. What did Doublelift do or change to cause that turnaround, and how much of it was the aforementioned support, someone you just mentioned, in Core JJ? So Core JJ is actually my personal MVP of the split, even though um, it's hard to argue that he like lifted TL up significantly from where they were last year, because obviously TL was still first last year as well. Um, but I think Core JJ has been playing phenomenally well. I think he's been the, by far the best player in North America this past split. Um, however, that obviously doesn't take away from Doublelift's achievements. I don't think that Doublelift's scoreline being quote-unquote bad in the first few games and then being quote-unquote good in the, in the last three um, is really indicative of what happened. I think to look at that, you really need to look at how the drafting went because you know, TL experimented a bit and they also got, uh, you know, run over with the Sona Terra composition, which they tried to counter with Ash Zyra and that didn't really work. So um, we had a lot of, again, like in game draft adjustments. That's why the series was just really interesting between these two teams and how they adapted from game to game. So I think it's less about double lift score and on the whole, how the team adapted to how they wanted to respond to what TSM was throwing down. Well, now double lift and TL head to MSI. And Emily, after Team Liquid's lackluster performance in 2018 at Worlds, what are your performances for the team here? So it's actually going to be really tough. Um, the three other major region teams that are going are all going to be incredibly strong. G2 like blistered through their finals like in some sort of speed run uh, against Origin. And then uh, whoever comes out of China is going to be very strong in either IG or JDG. And SK Telecom is looking really good after sweeping Griffin. So I don't think people should despair if TL don't do well in terms of results, but I do think that this is a stronger team than the team that they sent last year, uh, just, you know, in terms of individual players. And I mean, we'll see, we'll see if they can, they can upset. I think it's more like if, if someone is down on Team Liquid, like for example, if I say that, that TL have, you know, a, a shorter chance of making the final, it's not necessarily because I think TL are bad. It's just that, again, the three uh, other major region teams that are going to this tournament are all super good. Emily Rand, super good with the analysis as always. Thank you so much. For more coverage from MSI and beyond, keep it locked right here at ESPN.com slash esports.